You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Two thousand twenty-one order reminder: This is a Zoom meeting, uh, and anybody being recognized to speak, uh, please state your name prior to speaking. Uh, for members of the public that would like to speak, please use the raise your hand function uh, to be recognized, and you will be recognized and given the opportunity to provide a comment uh, when when uh, recognized by the board. Uh, with that said, uh, we'll get into it. Item one, to approve the Board of Selectmen minutes from February 3rd, 2021. Make a motion to approve. Second. All right, moved by Selectman Dunbar, seconded by Selectman Higgins. Any edits, correct, uh, uh, edits, changes, corrections? All right, hearing that, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions, pass unanimously. Item two, to consider and if appropriate, approve Brian Devlin, superintendent, WPCA, to waive the bid for the upgrading of the supervisory control and data acquisition, SCADA apparatus, from analog to digital in cabinet CP2 for the gravity belt thickener and award the contract to Aaron Associates in the amount of $36,326. <coughs> we have uh, Brian Devlin. Brian, if you would unmute yourself, give an overview to the board. Uh, yes, Jamie. Um, how are you doing this, uh, this evening? Um, the uh, SCADA system that we um, have right now, it's an analog uh, system, and the, we're upgrading the gravity bell thickener, and the control cabinet requires a digital format. So in order for the system to work properly, I need to upgrade the CPU to uh, communicate with the controls for this uh, gravity belt thickener control cabinet to make it work right. And that's what's required for the upgrade of the uh, control cabinet to change all the apparatus out to make it communicate. Okay. Uh, any questions? I'll move it. Been moved by Selectman Dunbar. Second. Seconded by Selectman Higgins. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, abstentions. Item passes unanimously. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much. Thanks, all right. Brian. Item three to consider and, if appropriate, approve a request from Gary Zelinsky, Supervisor, Department of Public Works, for the purchase of 43 trees and award the contract to Van Wilgen Garden Center in the amount of $12,945. Uh, Gary is on the uh, call. He did uh, <clears throat> include a number. Gary, are you here? I wasn't sure. All right. You know, unmute yourself. Well, we have in the package. Oh, actually, uh, hang on a second. I'm sorry. Yeah. Gary, go ahead. All right, I'll just go through it. He must have a hard time. On, sound must be off. He's unmuted, but not going through it. So we do have a, a package. There are three quotes within the package. Um, again, the reason why even this is the low bid of the three, um, but the reason why we're it's coming before this body is because it wasn't advertised. So although it went out, got multiple pricing, uh, the fact that it was not advertised uh requires us to waive um the the requirements uh so as i said there was uh 
th three uh, quotes included. They were range from the low bid of Van Wilgens of twelve thousand nine hundred forty-five. Uh, the second quote of uh, twelve thousand eighty-eight plus uh, the shipping cost of would come to thirteen thousand two hundred sixty-eight. And the third uh, quote was from Pride's Corner of fourteen thousand. 170 and that was including a 950 dollars delivery charge i'm sorry the second uh bidder was planter's choice all right so moved i'll second it uh, can you just tell us where these trees are going i actually was asked uh yeah i know they have a uh plan uh, hello yeah hello go ahead uh, oh. gary yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm having a problem. On yeah, that's all right. The, I'll go through the no. uh, bid and explain that. The question by Selectman Dunbar is just uh, the planting locations of these trees. Well, as you know, we suffered a lot of damage uh, from the tropical storm and the tornado. Um, we have some trees in mind and some streets in mind, including Windmill Hill Road, Yowego, um, <clears throat> There's also, uh, I'm working with the Community Forest Commission, also on placement uh, locations of trees. We have um, quite a few street corners uh, with town-owned property that we'd like to uh, plant some trees also. Um, and I'm sorry, I, I do have, multiple locations so um we're gonna get these in the ground in the spring yeah gary if you have a chance could you just uh pass on whatever list you have to me i, I was actually asked by a few people where they were going to be going um and we have a specific have, amount there, of trees is there, is there a specific request do you have requests is that what people are looking yeah i was for? asked by i was asked by someone where are these trees going they they saw it on the agenda I think the clarification. No, no. But, they don't have a request on where one wants to go. They just want to know where they are going. Oh, all right. Yeah, I could provide. That's all. No list. hurry. No okay. No, I mean, the list is always, we're still finalizing the list. We have many spots that we're just plugging everything in. Yeah, whenever you get it done, you just pass it on to me. No hurry. Sure. Yeah, no just, problem. just so the, the uh, board and for the public is aware, uh, every year, the town probably plants anywhere between 50 to 60 trees. Uh, many of these are uh, on, uh, within town right away, but also uh, uh, other open space areas that we have in town. Uh, the tree warden and public works, Gary Zielinski, uh develops a list based on um, areas that need to be replaced and working with the Community Forest Commission. However, um, not all, we'll definitely plant all of them even if all the locations have yet to been identified, but he's trying to work within a, a budget that we have and we have to get the order in. All right, uh, thank you. We do a meeting for so if there is a location somebody's interested in, uh, feel free to contact uh, Gary. Okay, thanks. All right. Hey, can, I, can I just add to that, uh, to that, please? Sure. No, and also, you know, um, we receive grant money also um, every year. From uh, Tree City USA, so uh, we get a lot of this money back. So, um, you know, if anybody's concerned about how much we're spending, we do uh, we do get a lot of money back as long as we um, play by their rules, so to speak. No, no, they, to clarify, it had nothing to do with the uh, the cost care. Okay, okay. Um, has it been moved? Second or? Yep, I moved. Uh, all right, I second. second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions, passage in the ashley. Thanks. Thank you, Gary. Thanks, Gary. All right. Item four, green use. To consider and if appropriate, approve a request from Diana McCarthy Berkeley for the use of the town green on April 17th, 2021 from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. to hold Earth Day activity. So moved. Second. Moved by Selectman Higgins. Second by Selectman Dunbar. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions, pass unanimous. All right, appointments Inland Wetlands Commission, alternate Patricia Lynch, 
to fill a vacancy left by Rick Ross, term to expire May 31st, 2024. I'm moving. Second. Second. Moved by Selectwoman Higgins, seconded by Selectman Dunbar. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed abstentions. It passed unanimously. Uh, reappointments. Veterans Advisory Committee. Madeline Clem. Term to expire January 31st, 2025. So moved. Second. Moved by Selectman Higgins. Second by Selectman Dunbar. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed abstentions. Passed unanimously. Uh, moving to item seven. Correspondence. Uh, Oh, we have a letter from uh, Mr. Costanzo asking that this be placed on the agenda. Um, dear Selectman Cosgrove, first I offer an explanation and apologies regarding my lack of response to your offer to hear from me la at the last night's Board of Selectmen's meeting. I was signed into the meeting but was unable to attend in its entirety as I was called away for an urgent matter. I now realize that by not confirming that I was leaving the meeting, I, in fact, appear to be in attendance. I appreciate you offering to hear a rebuttal from me on your comments regarding the covering of the debris pile at the site of the former Atlantic Wire Company that was brought up by Wayne Cook. I have now watched the February 3rd, 2021 meeting in its entirety on BCTV. Please do not confuse my unintended lack of response as being in full agreement with your comments to the other board members and the public. I apologize to the Zoom meeting host, Krista Malisi, for any misinference that she muted comments from me during the meeting, and for the confusion I caused for Mr. Cook, who rightfully thought that I was still actively logged in and in attendance. It has been my experience prior to this meeting to be muted or unrecognized at town meetings, but last night was not the case. <clears throat> if I were to rebut your comments regarding the covering of the piles and your belief that all agencies involved in the 2017 demolition of the buildings on the site were satisfied with the process when you checked with them, I would simply ask, when did you last check with all agencies that you mentioned? I believe you have been making the same remarks almost verbatim since 2019 maybe earlier. It was just about the time that Mr. Cook first questioned the possibility that the debris piles were contaminated. And I do understand that your efforts to ask the owners of the property to cover the piles was a long shot, as it was only a courtesy call without any real authority to enforce your request. So it is not so much that I take issues with what you said, but what you did not say. When was the last time you checked back with the agencies involved in the cleanup efforts at the site? Are the federal, state, district, and town agencies still all satisfied with the progress at the site? Are there any outstanding notice of violations that have been rem remedied to date? Are there any, piv uh, any vital post-demolition tests and reports that are forthcoming from the owners of the property? Please report back with the answers to these questions at the next Board of Selectmen meeting. I believe the signers of the petition and all citizens of Brantford deserve the entire truth not their abbreviated version. In certain circumstances, it is not wise to ask questions that you do not already know the answer to. This may be one of those circumstances. We are frustrated by the fact that the debris piles were allowed to remain on the property uncovered for three plus years awaiting final post demolition survey and test report. I think we have the right to expect our town government to step up the efforts by any avenues available to resolve this issue. What is more important than the health and safety? We are convinced more than before that it appears a potential hazardous material issue exists at the site. The fact that the property owners and the developers did not roll up their sleeves and resolve their issues back in 2017 without a lawsuit, that does not really benefit either one of them, is telling of the true extent of the trouble only on the site. Sincerely, Robert Costanza. Okay. Uh, so again, I, I believe this was addressed, and you know, maybe my comments have been, uh, as he stated in verbatim, since 2019. I believe it was even prior to that when this issue came up uh, on the RTM level on the floor, which not only myself, 
but RTM members uh, from both sides of the aisle had looked into the situation further. Um, my comments, I, I would say, when it, uh, say they were verbatim over the years, I would say I've been trying to be consistent in what we have uh, determined and discovered from our, my, uh, I say our, because there was, as I mentioned, RTM members on both sides of the aisle who looked into this matter. So I will once again state that <clears throat> when this first came up a number of years ago, I had checked with our local building official, our local uh, uh, health district, uh, who has then, their, well, through the health district's effort, had conversations with DEP and correspondence with Department of Public Health. Uh, because at that time, um, there wasn't construction activity or de demolition activity occurring. So therefore, the East Shore District Health Department uh, director reached out to the Department of Public Health to question the, uh, uh, if there was a public health risk. Uh, as I stated, as from what I have learned by reviewing the files, that, uh, that all proper testing was done, permitting was done, uh, and uh, protocols were followed during the demolition uh, of the project. Um, I had received calls when uh, the project first started uh, in terms of the demolition occurring, uh, which I, again, I had reached out to uh, the health district as well as the building official to be uh, checked that the activity was uh, within compliance. Um, <clears throat> as far as uh, outstanding notice of violations, I believe there is one that is uh, a number of. Uh, years old that's passed. And I believe that is what I had reported back uh, to the RTM as well as this body in my discussions with the owner that uh, there was some re um, testing that needed to be done that was expected to happen within the next couple months. And that was from my discussions with the owner. As far as additional testing of the material that is stockpiled on site, um, I am not aware uh, that uh, additional testing is required of that pile to close that out. I want to be clear, and as I stated uh, previously, prior to a building being demo uh, demolished, testing needs to be done to understand what the makeup, the materials that are, are make up that structure. A a that is then those testing results are filed. There's a permit given based on a remediation plan or abatement plan that will occur. <clears throat> the, the hazardous materials or contaminated materials are removed per the uh, plan that is developed by environmental professionals. That <clears throat> my understanding is that all occurred. Environmental professional developed a, uh, an abatement plan or remediation plan. The materials were removed from the structure. Then further testing is done. Clearance is given. The building is allowed to come down and demolished. And that is what is seen in that pile. Uh, so again, I, I think we've, we've continued to, to respond uh, appropriately. Uh, we've engaged the professionals and the agencies uh, that oversee this activity. Uh, this is not overseen by the RTM or the Board of Selectmen. Uh, this, is, uh, this type of activity is overseen by uh, the uh, proper authorities and has been all along. So other than that, I, I really uh, don't know what further explanation I can give. Uh, to Mr. Costanzo, but I see he is on the call. Uh, if he would like to unmute himself and have a, uh, make a comment, I will give him that opportunity at this time. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Cosgrove. It's Robert Costanzo. Um, I guess the, the question is, is all the testing was done prior to the building being demolished? And I understand that 
it was post uh, uh, a post abatement report made up uh, showing all the toxins that were visible at the time, I should say, or accessible at the time. But during the demolition of the building, new things are exposed, uh, found that you can't see or find until the building is knocked down. So if you're telling me that there's no um, uh, testing done for the debris that falls out of the building and makes the piles that was encapsulated before the building was taken down, and you're saying that there is no required um, testing of that material? And that's a question. Do you know if that's a... a yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not... A, well, I would just say I'm not aware of material that was that was demoed. Uh, it was part of the demolition that was not identified prior to the demolition. Are you are you stating that you're you're aware of material that was not tested or was not identified prior to demolition that was then since demo and, and it exists in that pile? Uh, no, but I, I I don't know of anything for fact. Um, I don't think you would have the facts unless you did test it. Um, so I would believe that it, there is a post abatement test, but there's no post demolition test. Do you know if there's one required, and it, it, is that what is uh, the test we're waiting for? Um, Where there's I, a notice I, of violation. Is the notice of a violation that they haven't tested fi the no. final test? Mr. Costanzo, my understanding is, and I thought from our conversation, I thought they would, uh, that they were required to, or my understanding was, was, was questioning the same thing. Were there further tests of that pile required? And there is not. The, uh, my understanding is that the notice of violation is not um, related to the uh, pile that is uh, stored on the site. Okay, um, I guess I'll just go one step further. Uh, the health department and um, made a comment, our, our, um, our health director, that there was no imminent danger to the neighborhood or the neighbors or anybody else in town, the citizens, from those files. And my question to him and, I, and to you, I know it's not your purview, but uh, maybe you could get the answer, is, um, how, how could you prove that to us without a test? Uh, the building stood um, 300, you know, 300 uh, uh, yards to the right of where the piles are now. Uh, they got there by being bulldozed across the lot and put into those piles. I don't believe those piles were ever tested. Um, he did say that maybe they grabbed a brick and tested one brick for asbestos. But um, those piles, as they stand right now, those seven piles, I don't believe someone, I don't believe anyone has tested them yet. So to make the comment that there's no imminent danger without really knowing, uh, it kind of concerns myself and the neighbors. Okay, I'm just, I believe that that statement of no imminent health risk may have come from not sure if that was attributed directly to the director of the Shore Health or if that was Department of Public Health after reviewing uh, the, the documents in the site. I would just say this. I, here, what you're saying is that the, the, material, the piles were not tested. And what I want really for the public to understand the process is that while the material was in a full structure, Prior to dom demolishing, they go through and they did extensive testing on the material that make up that structure. So therefore, that structure is then taken down through its equipment, put through a crushing machine, and then transported over to, that's what makes up those piles. So... I know you're saying that you don't know because we, we didn't test the piles that sit there, but the 
is the structure that made up those piles, let's be clear, was tested. And after abatement of the hazardous material was removed from the structure, there was confirmation by environmental professionals that the hazardous material was removed from the structure prior to it coming down and being crushed. Can yeah. I comment to that, please? Uh, uh, no, I'm having a conversation with the petitioner. Um, well, can this another citizen comment? After I'm done with Mr. Uh, Costanzo, I don't know. I have my hand up, but Wayne, I'm sorry. To jump oh, sorry. In. Go ahead. This is uh, Bobby Costanzo. Um, okay. Um, I looked over the report very carefully. I'm not an expert on this by any means, but it was a a very large building. I, I want to say it was 760,000 square feet, possibly larger. But there was some open space. A lot of material was demolished. I mean, the building was demolished. It created a lot of material. And uh, when I looked over the reports for what was considered a contaminant and removed was mostly things that were very evident by walking into a room or walking along the uh, looking at the windows looking at the um, uh, the type of chalk used that might have uh, asbestos in it or another contaminant um, there was some uh, uh, some drilling through the floors i guess to look for uh, oil that dripped out of a, uh, a storage container that they used for heating the building at one time uh, but everything that was removed seems like it could have filled up maybe a dozen 50 gallon bags in that whole big building. It just doesn't seem possible that all the contaminants could fit into a dozen construction bags and be taken out of there, white gloved and taken out. I, I just don't, um, I don't think until the building was actually in the process of being demolished, and new material is being exposed that they couldn't test because it was encapsulated. It would make sense that they would make another test at the end. Now, I'm not doubting that they did extensive tests prior. I'm not doubting that when they removed what they did remove, if they removed it all and it all fit in 12 bags, that's fine. Um, and I'm just using that. I don't know for a fact that it was 12, but it was a very small amount for the size of the building. and. I'm, I'm not disputing that there was a test done showing that a post abatement test showing that what was in those bags that was taken out of there. My question is, all the, the rest of the item that was not tested that, or that was exposed during demolition, who was there on site watching and saying, stop, we, we noticed something right there. That building was taken down rather fast for that size of a building. And I don't really see any reports of on-site people during the, the demolition. I see everything prior to. So a lot of the things is that is the test that's coming going to be showing what's in those piles. And then I'm just going to ask another question. In a perfect world, you think those piles should have should have remained there for three years? I'm asking, you know, as a question, not as an expert. Do you have an opinion on that? Do you think it's okay that a stockpiled that material there for over three years now? Well, I, I would much rather see the project move forward in a timely manner. Unfortunately, no, I, that I, I agree with you. But <laughs> I, so, I, I mean, yeah. does it seem like three years is a long time for those piles to sit there? I don't want to put you on the spot because well, I, I, I guess I, I think I just answered that. I would have rather see the, the, the project not get held up and would have been able to. Uh, uh, get their approvals and, and move forward and get and see that development happen. Uh, I was uh, that's what I would rather see than seeing a a, a pile sitting there. But um, you know, unfortunately, that's that's not where we, uh, that's not in the towns. That's not in our control. Uh, that that's between uh, uh, you know the, the, that's in the control of the uh, owners and the developers in order to get that done in a. a timely manner so, so yes i would so just say 
And, and, and just so, but I want to also clear, be clear on a statement that you made, and really just for the benefit of the public. I, I think when you were saying the the amount of material that was actually uh, remediated, removed, and you you said twelve bags or something, that was that was just that you, that was a comment that you kind of just made. There was nothing that substantiated that it was that little of material, correct? Uh, that was from my um, going through volumes of reports that were filed down the town hall that I asked for copies of. And if you looked at all the material that was removed um, and uh, the amount of it, um, I don't know for a fact, like I said, I'm not saying it was 12 bags. It was a very small amount for the size of the building. For the size I'll, of the say, I'll stand by that. Yeah. And then I would just add uh, one of your comment regarding was it, was there uh, uh, any oversight? And, you know, there there is oversight when this uh, activity, a remediation activity is occurring. Um, and as well as I believe, um, you know, a number of neighbors had contacted me once the uh, abatement had started. Um, I, you may have contacted me as well at that time, and which I had immediately contacted both uh, the East Shore District Health Director as well as our building official to uh, go over to the site and ensure that uh, proper uh, uh, proceed protocols and procedures were being followed, which they did. Hey, um, this is Bob Costanzo again. Uh, since we could kind of come to an agreement that. It, in a in a perfect world, the material shouldn't have lingered there for three years. And I do understand that currently there's no control that the town has for allowing that to stay there for three years. Um, I have been exploring through the uh, our uh, environmental commission and uh, with the uh, uh, board of health, um, our. Uh, or Brantford or regional uh, health department. And I'd like possibly to get your opinion on, maybe we should tighten up on the demolition uh, permit process and include in there something like, if you're gonna have stockpile, how long will it be there? Uh, maybe the town could say it can't stay more than six months. Um, yeah. If there was, a, if we, if we have, you know, if you want control over it, we're going to have to make some changes to maybe the, the permit process and reviewing those reports that they're um, not reports, their plan that they, the, the pre-plan that they submit to the building department. Possibly, we have to tighten that up so that when these other big projects in town that are going on that are going to be knocking down some older buildings with maybe some problems, that we don't have the same problem occur. Uh, second time, a third time, or a fourth time. Yeah. The only thing I would, reasonable if I wanted to go through and maybe make some recommendations. Uh, I'm, you, you, I'm sorry, I didn't. I, uh, uh, I said, um, do you feel that's a a, a, a good uh, good mission to to undertake to maybe try to forward that through the RTM rules and ordinance to maybe tighten up on the building departments. Um, yeah. requirements for a demolition plan prior to having something linger for three years on the property. Yeah, let me just mute whoever just signed in. Uh, are they dropped off? The, uh, yeah, I think that that may be a better avenue to go through zoning on that, uh, on that requirement. I, I believe that material was, um, my understanding was going to be reused on site. Um, so I think that's the reason why the material was left on site, that it was going to be part of, uh, be utilized during the construction of the new development. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, Mr. Cook. Yeah. Um, once again, Mr. Casanzo is right on top of this. However, I'd like to add a couple things. Um, as you can see on the screen, there's a number of different types of bricks over there and um, in several different piles. And from what the East Shore Health Department director told us, he tested two bricks, two bricks, and it did not come back with any asbestos. Well, you know, good for him. But I took the initiative, as did others, to go to the East Shore Health uh, uh, Department 
board of uh, directors, and I brought the issue up. And the reality is they knew nothing about this, which I guess that's all right. But once again, you know, the, the reality is this, that there are bricks over there that were ground and put what they call fugitive dust in the air, which I have a couple of few friends over there, was over their porch, over the outside of their building, was being blown around. And I asked specifically in a letter to the East Shore Health uh, uh, Director if those bricks were safe and how did he determine it. And I really, to this day, have gotten nothing of any substance back. And they say, well, it's, bricks aren't dangerous. Well, not really, because look at this. You can see that this is one article from the internet, I found several, where bricks were um, composed and built very, very, um, you know, often, matter of fact, almost invariably with asbestos prior to 1980, because it provided a tensile strength to it, to the brick. Now, there's a lot of bricks over there. There's a lot of many things over there, and they were not tested. They were never tested. And I asked the Eshar Health Director, do you think that testing two bricks in all of those piles is sufficient? And he really had nothing to say, you know, other than, well, we don't think there's any imminent health hazard. And I said, well, why don't you show us the data? Why don't you show us the data that those ground bricks that could very well contain a good deal of asbestos when they were certainly pulverized and when airborne, why don't you show us the data? And nobody has the data. So what do you expect us to believe, that these piles were tested? No. Then Eshore Health says, well, you know, that's really not our jurisdiction. That's the state jurisdiction. And I'm going to put this back on you, too, uh, for Select and Cosgrove. If, and I use this analogy. If there was a crime in town, and I'm not saying that this was a crime necessarily, but if there was a crime in town and it was the state police jurisdiction to handle this and they weren't doing it, would Chief Mohern and you and everybody else just let it go and say, yeah, well, it's not our jurisdiction. We're not going to do anything. Because this is what you do. You do it here. You did it to Jay Medlin. Oh, it's the state. It's the state's responsibility. At some point, it becomes the town's responsibility when it's in the town jurisdiction and within the town territory. And that's what's going on here. You never stepped up. You never stepped up and took a leadership role in this. All you ever did was say, oh, they went and tested it when they were supposed to. Yeah, like Mr. Costanzo said, they tested the, the obvious asbestos over there, like if it was lining the walls or something else, they never tested the brick. And I mean, I don't know if people remember this, probably quite a few do my age. That was the most polluted, contaminated site, I would say almost in the country at one point. You couldn't go by that when I was a kid without holding your nose. All the water was brown, all the, all the foliage, all the, all the seagrass was brown. It was awful. So who knows what really went on over there? And I'll tell you the truth, and I know I'm a little bit out there when I say this, I don't trust anybody on this stuff. I don't trust you, First Selectman. I don't trust the state. I don't trust East Shore Health. I don't trust anybody because the one thing we've asked for, the one thing we've always asked for, and that's the test results of those bricks and anything else, you've never, no one has ever provided them, not once, not even on the two bricks. So, you know, you can keep giving us the song and dance but I'm not buying it. And I hope Mr. Costanzo, you know, doesn't buy it. I don't think he does. And I hope the town doesn't buy it. Because once again, you're just kicking the can down the road and away from you where you don't want it to belong. Yeah, okay, thanks. Um, and again, I can't reiterate enough for the public's benefit that there's professionals, environmental professionals who, who develop and, as well as review the uh, remediation plan as well as the activity. Uh, that's, not the point. that's not the point. You don't get my point. My point okay. is that that building was largely and still composed of bricks. Bricks have been known to contain a huge amount of asbestos throughout history. The bricks were not tested, but they were pulverized and the material sent airborne. You go to the state, you go to East Shore Health, oh, bricks don't contain asbestos. Well, I have news for you. They do. They I know do. You had an internet article that showed. I see that. I, well, I, fine. There's not, I, I understand there's that. Not just, there's not just one Thanks. article. There's many, many articles. Thank you for your comment. I'm gonna no, I'd like to know. I mean, you know, you always just dismiss me, but you never answer my question. Why don't you test the bricks in a way that we could all understand? 
and see the data. But you're not going to do that because you, you're probably afraid what is actually in existence over there. You know, if you did it, this you, know, you don't trust anybody. All well, right. No, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Nichols, you have a comment. Yes, I have a. Uh, I only have four. I, I'd like to go in order, though. So just to make it easier. So the piping underground uh, that discharges into the river, because we all know that's the reason why they got shut down for polluting the river. Was that removed? I, I don't. I know there's some more activity that still needs to occur uh, for that, and I'm not sure exactly what piping you're speaking to. So, well, it would have been uh, their discharge piping. They yeah. discharged into the river, and that was the reason why they got the, the fine from the DEP, right. and that was the reason why they shut down because the fine was so enormous for them polluting the Branford River. You're not aware of this. I'm aware of it, but go ahead. Ask your, you got four questions. Well, that's my question. What, what was that piping removed? I just stated, I did not, I can't answer what the limits of. Uh, I'm not asking the limits. I'm asking if the piping underground was removed that discharges into the Branford River. Okay. And you, I'm going to answer this one more time. I'm not aware of the limits of what was removed. So that may still be there and be prior, uh, part of a, uh, <clears throat> the uh, next phase, or it may have been removed. I can't answer that. Go ahead with okay. your second question. Okay. Were there ever any breaches in that pipe? Is there ultrasonic? Anything done to prove whether or not there was breaches in that pipe? where the ground may be more contaminated or not? I know, I, I can't speak for the pipe. I know, as I stated before, there's uh, additional uh, studies that need to be done and testing, I believe, uh, related to uh, the groundwater. Okay. And I believe there has been a series of tests. I believe they have to do more before any activity, uh, additional activity can, uh, you know, ground disturbance can occur, is my understanding. Okay. Um, so with that lawsuit that's going on between the developer and the uh, owner, there was areas of contamination that they cannot find those piles. Have we found out where those piles are, or where those contaminated slabs, more should I say, of concrete are? Uh, or is it just leaching into the ground? And we both know, we've been in the construction yeah. industry for a long time, that the ground will eventually wash itself out. And that's why I'm so concerned about this, that these piles have been sitting there so long. My other concern is concrete has sil silica in it. Mm -hmm. Silica ground, we both know what it does, causes cancer. That's why you have to use water or OSHA before you grind any concrete. But we left piles over there, and we endangered people. Any comment to that? Well, I think I agree. During the crushing activity, they have an obligation to control the dust uh, to prevent that from I agree. I'm in, in its current state in the piles where it is. Uh, um, you know, I, I'm not aware of. Uh, uh, Dust continuing to migrate off the off of the property. As you know, once it's once it gets wet and, and it kind of reforms back to a uh, uh, and it kind of crusts over. It's it's not it's during the crushing activity, which I agree or gra that you have the most concern with dust. Well, I think that's most people's concern is why it should be covered. You know, I'm not going to keep beating a dead horse. Obviously, the, the the landowner knows there's a problem. You don't go spray a thing with, uh, you know, hydro seed. Like I said, hydro seed doesn't grow on bricks. We all know that. And it all washed off. It. The bottom line is the town needs to step in, in my opinion, and say, listen, this is what needs to be done. If not, you're going to be fined every day. And it's going to be a hefty fine. Until then, you know, I got to say, we, we got to look out for the kids on the ball field. 
we got kids in Sliney school. Like, and, and the neighbors in that neighborhood. And that's just my opinion. Thank you. All right. May I, may I say something? Go ahead, state your name. Um, Carolyn Sires, a uh, District 5 representative from the RTM. I did attend several of the meetings with the health department and spoke with the health department. And they did say when the dust, should, it, should the dust and when the dust present itself in the neighbor's homes, they would like a phone call when it happens. They were willing to go to the homes and test that dust. So uh, Michael had made that known that they're not turning away from that, but they, unless they get a call, they're not going to go into somebody's home, but they did put it out there that they are willing to test the dust because to see what, what contaminants, if any, the dust may contain. So that they are, they, or they were proactive to it. They were not aware it was, in the neighbors' homes during the the spring, when their windows are are open, so they did make, they did offer and extend themselves to do that. Okay, That's thank it. you. Thanks. All right, uh, Mr. Costanza, is, is your hand up, or was that pre? Yeah, pre uh, yes, uh, this is Bob Costanza again. Um, I just want to make it clear for the public that I did go down to the town hall and request. Um, all the test reports that were filed. And I really spent a lot of time going through them. I cannot find that there was any post demolition test on any brick. I can't find brick in all that, all those volumes. And it's quite a few pages, many, many pages. I don't know if it was an oversight or, um, it's just not common to test brick before you knock down a building since the building was primarily a brick building and big size. Um, so yeah, uh, that's our concern is that, that, that the, I want the public to understand that we're not just saying that the sky is falling. We have reason to be concerned mm -hmm. um, because we cannot find, and no one is to this point has shown us any reports on any of the brick, although they do say, uh, or the, the East Shore Health said that they did test two. But even then, where are the reports on even the two? I, I don't have them, and I, I couldn't find them at the town hall. Okay. So you, you, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, as far as the distinction, you, East Shore District Health was who after the fact went and picked up two bricks. The question, again, getting back to the environmental professionals that develop these plans and, and oversee the demolition activity, uh, and then confirm that uh, it's been properly uh, remediated, it's their determination whether those, the material there that they, and again, there's a number of things. They look at the, the type of material, the, 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 there's certain uh, characteristics, the visual characteristics that would, uh, the year of the, the uh, building that would lend to whether that triggers that further testing of that material is necessary. Um, so that is a, a question uh, for the environmental professional uh, that did the, the uh, uh, the, the plan for the building um, of why uh, prior to it wasn't uh, required or, or uh, to, to test the brick. And um, that is something uh, I can reach out and get further clarification on uh, what led to that decision. Uh, okay. Bob, right, Stanzo, Bob Stanzo, Stanzo, again, if you could, if you could reach out and find out why the brick wasn't tested or if you could present test of the brick that maybe uh, were not in the file um, until recently. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I went through the same files you did and there is, I mean, there is a lot of testing that is done and I know there was a lot of mortar and grout tested and caulk and things of that nature. Uh, I don't recall seeing the brick, but I will get you that answer. 
that again, there's a lot of factors that would determine when, uh, uh, and again, going through a number of projects of how the environmental professionals determine what needs to be uh, tested. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm going to move on to uh, other business. And My hand is up for that last item. Yeah, we're moving on. No, we're not moving on. Everybody else got to everybody else got to speak twice. Why can't I? No, everybody spoke except Mr. Costanzo. Who's so I want to speak twice too. Why can't I do that? I'm a citizen of this town. What's the matter? Are you afraid of what I have to say? Are you afraid of what I have to say? No, I'm moving on. No, I want to speak to this item. I have a perfect right to you. Listen, this is a board of selectmen meeting. I know what it is, and you keep lying. You keep lying and lying and lying, and you just when somebody challenges you, you mute them. I want to speak to this item, please. I'll give you a minute under other business. What do you mean you give me a minute? You're not giving me a minute. All right. I have a perfect right to speak to this item. This is what you and the RTM do all the time. Yeah. You do it all the time. Why? Because you don't want to hear what we have to say. Why? Because it shows how corrupt and dishonest you are. That's the truth. Can you please uh, refrain from speaking so we can move on? Thank no, you. I'd like to speak to this Thank item. You. Well... I'm moving on. No, I'd like to speak to this item. I have the perfect right to speak to this item. Why can't I? Because you don't want to hear what I have to say? Is that I it? Think, I think we listened to your plan. No, you did not. You did not. I, mean, I want to speak to this item, please. Thank you. Uh, item eight, other business. I want to speak to this discusses. item. I want to speak to this item, please. I have the perfect right to speak to this item. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Are you going to be quiet? So I can answer. No, I want to speak to this item. I have a perfect right to speak to it. What are you afraid of? Uh, other business. It's a very simple matter. No, I want to speak to this item. What do you want to do? Throw me out of the meeting? Is that what you're going to do? Like the cowards that you all are? Is no, that what you're going to do? You know, you're, you're, real, you're, you're real big man with the Zoom. Real big man with the Zoom. You know, you push a button, you get rid of people. That's just cowardly. That's all that is. You gonna let me speak to this item, please? Okay, uh, other business. Can I you speak to this item, please? Discuss. Can I speak to this item, please? No, quiet down, please. No, I won't discuss quiet down. Yeah, I am a citizen of this town. I have a perfect right to speak to this item. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? And I could have spoken to it already, but you'd rather keep me silent than put the, than put the truth out there. That's what you always do. You're afraid of the truth. All right. All right. To discuss a citizen position regarding Parkside Village. I'd now, like I to speak to this item. I want to speak to this item. I have a perfect right to speak to this item. Why can't I speak to this item? Tell me why. Tell the town why I can't speak to this item. I Tell me. Spoke, I think you spoke. I gave no, you I did not. I did not follow up with my comment. All right. I didn't follow up. I have a perfect right to speak to this. What are you afraid of? I'd like to know. Um, what are you afraid of? I just asked for a little decorum. There's no decorum. You told me I couldn't speak. That's not decorum. That's a violation of my civil rights. That's no decorum. Yeah, all right. Well, I, I, don't, I disagree. And you what do you mean you disagree? You let people speak. Why, why are you afraid of people speaking? The only reason you would possibly be afraid of that is because we're going to reveal you for being the dishonest and corrupt politician that you are. That's the only reason. Be ashamed of yourself. Okay, Mr. Cook. No, I'm, I'm, I want to speak to this item. And I said you will have the opportunity no, once I address this. I want to speak to this item on this agenda item. That's my right. All right. All That's right. my right. That's my right. It's, it's, it's not your right. It is you my right. Opportunity. It's absolutely my right. You ever hear of the 14th Amendment? You ever hear of the 14th Amendment? Okay, if you can't be quiet, I'm going to have to... Remove well, you that's nothing this. new. You always get rid of me anyhow because I speak the truth and you don't want to hear it. Because the truth is how dishonest you are. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> and I uh, put Mr. Cook in the waiting room and we'll have him come back. All right. A discuss a citizen petition regarding Parkside Village. As we, the board received a, well, actually, I should clarify, the RTM received a petition. Uh, an examination of past and present living conditions at Parkside Village housing complex and its oversight by the Brantford Housing Authority. Uh, this board had, uh, the RTM had 
move this i or ask the art board of selectmen to take this item up we uh had a couple meetings where we had robust discussion regarding this issue as well it delved into some other issues um i think at this point my recommendation i bring this to the boards uh uh, value, uh ask for your input on this at this point in time um i would ask that we invite uh the housing authority through the chairman uh to attend a board of selectmen's meeting where we give the opportunity to uh address um this item and again when i refer to it is the as i stated before it's a uh, examination of the past and present living conditions at Parkside Village Housing Complex and its oversight by the Housing Authority. So I, I would I'd like to invite uh, them to attend the next or an upcoming Board of Selectmen meeting uh, and to address uh, the board. I'll second that motion. Okay, it's been moved out. I guess mine was a, a motion seconded by Selectman Dunbar. Um, are we all in agreement on this? Uh, yes. Okay, yeah, so I'll take it to a vote, and all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, Oppose, abstention, pass unanimously. All right, so that's um, what we'll do. We'll have, we'll invite them to our, I guess, our next Board of Selectmen's meeting, uh, which uh, will be in a couple of weeks. Uh, okay, I do see we have a, uh, Mr. Petrowski, uh, you can unmute yourself. Thank you, uh, First Selectman, and, and uh, I appreciate what you guys did tonight by inviting them. But I just hope that we're not going to, the town at least, isn't going to run into a problem with dealing with Yale law instead of actually dealing with the housing authority on this. And I would hope that you could have uh, Commissioner Lowe and Collins and Colello and Mastrangelo um, answer without any uh, you know, input from Yale Law or their consultant in this matter. And I just hope that you guys ask some questions because I do appreciate the fact that you yourself, as among as uh, other members, did admit that there is some issues there, that they have to be resolved. I just hope that we could do it without the input of uh, a law firm and consultants and just hear out what's been going on down there. And like I told you guys last meeting, there is a lot to tackle. And it is a lot for you guys to take on head on as far as, you know, fire violations and uh, not renting units and so on and so on. So I appreciate the fact and uh, thank you very much for putting that in. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, any further comments? All right. With that, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Move the second. At all in favor, say aye. 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 Bye. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.